Hello students, this lecture is about Typhi Dot. In this lecture, we will study about the principle, the method, results and interpretation of the method Typhi Dot, which is used for the rapid diagnosis of typhoid fever. Typhoid and paratyphoid fever, together they are called enteric fever. They are caused by Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi A, B and C. The symptoms of typhoid fever, the person experiences poor appetite, there is headache or generalized aches throughout the body, there is high fever, it can be as high as 103 to 104 Fahrenheit. There is lethargy, there is diarrhea, abdominal pain and discomfort. The person also complains of congestion in the chest. There can be the constipation, there can be mild vomiting or the slowness of the heartbeat also called bradycardia. There can be the asymptomatic persons also who are a serious threat to the society because themselves they don't show the symptoms but they can transmit the infection to the healthy individuals. So they should be screened for. For diagnosis of typhoid, the blood culture, stool culture, and bile culture are the traditional methods which have been carried throughout the ages. They are based upon the detection of the bacteria in the clinical sample, blood, stool or the bile. These methods, they have the limitation that they are time consuming and they also require the facility of the culture. So to overcome this, the Vidal test was introduced, which also has its own limitation. Like the Vidal test seldom gives the positive results in the first week of the fever. Nowadays, the Typhi dot method has become a popular method. It has overcome the limitations of the culture and the Vidal test. So first of all about the principle of Typhi dot. It is a rapid method. It is based upon the principle of lateral immunoassay. In this method, the detection of the immunoglobulins, the IgG as well as the IgM is possible on the basis of which the infection can be classified as the chronic or the acute infection. The principle is of the immunochromatography which is based upon the capillary movement of the immune complex and it is originally based upon the antigen antibody interactions. Here you detect the specific antibodies in the patient sample and the antigen is the S typhi O and H antigen. So there is the antibody present, then the complex is formed, a band is formed, and these bound antibodies, they are further stained by the anti-human conjugated antibody, which is conjugated with the either colloidal dye or the gold particles. So the construction of the kit, the kit is in the form of a casset which is made up of the nitrocellulose membrane or there can be a NCM strip also. There is a well, sample well where the sample is loaded. The strip is divided into the IgM and the IgG region. 
there can be the control regions and the test regions. This is showing the construction of two different types of the kits. This one, there you can see there are two strips for the IgM, the strip 2 for the IgG antibody. There are the predecided areas which are the control and the test region. Here there is a single strip and there is a different band area which is pre-designed for the G and for the M that means for the IgG and for the IgM and above these areas there is the control region. So the kit may come in either of these two constructed form. In addition to this the kit also has a buffer and a plastic dropper. The kit is constructed in the manner there is the sample pad where the sample will be loaded. This sample pad contains the antigen which is the recombinant antigen H and the O. It is conjugated with the colloidal gold. It is called HO colloidal gold. And in addition to this, this sample area also has the rabbit Ig gold conjugate. Then there is the NCM strip as I have told you previously that there can be the G and the M bands on two different strips or these bands can be on the single strips depending upon the kit which is being used. The M band it is pre-coated with the monoclonal antibody which is anti-human IgM. The G band is pre-coated with the monoclonal antibody which is GOAT anti-rabbit IgG. The control region is pre-coated with the GOLD anti-rabbit IgG. For the procedure, first of all, the sample from the patient is collected, the plasma or the serum is separated, the kit is taken out from the refrigerator and it is allowed to come at the room temperature. Then a cassette is taken out from the kit and one drop of the sample is added to the sample well followed by the one drop of the sample diluent using the plastic dropper which is available in the kit. Then the timer is set up and the results they are read after 15 minutes. We will see the different possibilities. If there is the person who is having the chronic infection, the fever is in the late stage or there is latent infection. This is a patient who has been chronically infected with salmonella typhi or paratyphi and the antibodies they are present for very long duration or this person can have the previous infection or it may also have the latent infection. So in this case, what would happen that there is the antigen which is coated with the colloidal, which is, which is binding with the colloidal goat. This is the conjugate, so this is the conjugate antigen. If the patient sample has the IgG antibody, then this antibody will bind with this conjugate which is present in the sample well area. After this conjugate has been formed, it will rise up by the capillary movement. It will come in the strip region where there is the presence of the anti-human IgG. 
So this will give a burgundy band and this person will be the called IgG reactive. So there will be the band in the G region or we will say there is a G band. There can be the second situation where the person is having the acute or the recent infection. So this person is having the IgM antibodies in the serum that is because of the acute infection. So this is the colloidal gold HO conjugate which is present in the sample well. Here the patient serum sample will be added. Now see what will happen if there is IgM antibody in the serum sample then this will combine with the HO conjugate and this immune complex will be formed. This complex contains of the HO antigen which is conjugated with colloidal gold and it contains the IgM antibody from the patient serum sample. This complex which is formed in the sample well region, it will rise because of the capillary movement and it will reach the strip region where there is the presence of the anti-human IgM in the ambient region. So it will further bind with this complex and this large complex is formed and it will give the burgundy color in the M band area. So it is called that the person is IgM reactive. For the control, all the kits they have got are built in control. So there will be always a control band. If there is no control band, then the assay is said to be inactive. So there has to be a burgundy colored band in every kit when the test is applied. In the control region again there is the colloidal gold and this colloidal gold is conjugated with the rabbit IgG. When the patient samples they are added then there will be a complex formation which is because of the wetting of the strip. A large complex will be formed which is the goat anti-rabbit IgG conjugate. So this complex is formed when there is wetting of the strip because of the addition of the sample and the sample diluent. So again this complex is formed in the control region and it is also of the burgundy color. So this was the working. Now what can be the different results as we have discussed that there can be a negative or the non-reactive result. This condition will be when there is no band in the M region and there is no band in the G. Then is it said that the person is not having the typhoid because the person is neither having the IgM antibodies nor the person is having the IgG antibodies. But the C band should be there. In the case of the positive reaction, there can be the burgundy color band in the M region, then the person is IgM positive, it indicates the acute infection. There can also be a band in the G region. In some patients, this is called the G band, a burgundy color band here. This is the IgG positive and it indicates the chronic infection. In some situations, there can be band in the both M region as well as in the G, there is the M band as well as there is the G band. So there are two burgundy color bands corresponding to M, corresponding to G. So this patient is having the previous or the chronic infection and 
it is also having a recent infection of the typhoid. In all the conditions, there should be a band in the C region. So, when there is a burgundy color band in the C region, then the reaction is considered to be valid. So, if there is no band in the C region, so that is invalid result. The test is not performed properly or the storage of the kit was not proper and the test has to be repeated again. For the limitations of this typhi dot, it is a qualitative method and it has low detection limit. It can give negative results in the positive patient. So, it is having a poor sensitivity as well as poor specificity. So, as compared with the culture, it is not a better method, but it is a rapid method. So, it has to be interpreted in conjunction with the clinical findings and the other diagnostic procedures. So, to conclude this lecture, we have studied the principle, the procedure and interpretation of the method typhi dot in this lecture. This typhi dot is a simple method. It is reliable, it is rapid, it is a quite inexpensive method, hence affordable and it can be used for the rapid and accurate diagnosis of typhoid fever. Thanks for your patient hearing.